Yo, what is up everybody, and welcome back to another Madden 21 online CFM game. We are now in, I believe, the year 2024. We are now in Season 5 of the Premier Madden League online CFM. We have quickly jumped into preseason. Normally, the offseason recap is very detailed with this series. You know, there's a lot of moves in the offseason as far as signing guys, making trades, the draft. But as we enter the final season of this CFM, there's truly not much to go over as far as the offseason, right? We had a couple of signings we signed an aging Micah Hyde to be our backup strong safety you guys might have noticed on the field Cole Komet we actually signed him he's about an 83 overall to be our starting tight end so neither the guys we drafted uh, in season four Sam Laperta or uh, uh, Payne Durham I believe it is neither guy ended up really panning out for us too much as far as like developing and Komet which is a better option we had the money in free agency of course having DJ Uwe Angole at quarterback means we have a rookie contract for a quarterback despite being a number one overall pick it's still way cheaper than it would be to even have Matt Stafford as our starting quarterback right because Stafford would be commanding 20 to 30 mil a year anyways so yeah we got that and we also signed Anthony Barr to be our starting left outside linebacker once again simply because he was a better option in free agency for one season than our previous starting outside uh, linebackers which were Justin Houston and the rookie Gavin Potter so that's essentially the free agency rack uh, wrap up in a moment you guys will see our draft class but honestly our draft class is not gonna matter too much as far as this team because you know based on the the talent that we have in our roster whoever we draft from rounds one to seven probably won't develop quickly enough to be an impact player on our team by the time we're at the end of the season. I mean, sure, they might be really good in a couple of years, but we don't have a couple of years. We know this is the last year of this CFM, Season 5. Madden 22 comes out in like a month or two, right? Less than two months from now, I believe. And obviously, there's not going to be one more season of this. So we have that prior knowledge going into this final season. This is going to be the last dance, whatever you want to call it, right? So here is our draft class. As uh, this is right after the draft ends, I'm just going to show you guys all the guys right here rather than the one-by-one one screenshot during the draft. So we actually drafted another outside linebacker in the first round. Kind of just, you know, wanted to get someone that could maybe play for us, barring injury or something like that. But otherwise, you see, like, you know, the cornerback turnage. He might be, like, our fourth or fifth string cornerback at this point of the CFM. We got a... Was it a left guard that might be our utility offense alignment in case somebody gets injured? Probably the most impactful player we drafted might have been the guy we drafted last near the end of the seventh round, Antoine Littleton. I don't know if you guys checked the physical attributes on this guy, but he is six foot, 269 pounds. Yeah, that's right. Like, the guy is that big and he's playing a running back? What? So what I actually did post-draft was converted him to fullback. At fullback, he's actually a 76 overall and is the equivalent of a first-round draft pick. And as you guys see here, kid's a little bit of a bruiser. <laughs> he is a little bit of a bruiser. Look at him bullying his way in, battling with a defensive tackle in for six. And I'm not going to lie, there's one guy that might be earning minutes in actual meaningful games it might be Antoine Littleton as far as in preseason so I'm only gonna show you guys one preseason matchup as we hit Littleton out the backfield and he hits Jacoby Stevenson oh my goodness that was a boom shot delivered by the running back oh my yeah Littleton is I don't say he's the real deal because this is preseason against backups but I mean I'm having fun using him and you know, we still have Taysom Hill on the roster, and Hill is technically a fullback for us as well. But, I mean, hey, normally teams don't care about either fullback. We got two guys that we could use as, you know, just utility guys. As uh, We also have LaVishka Chanel. I actually should have mentioned this one as well. Chanel is spinning around, hitting all sorts of moves, and nearly scoring a crazy touchdown. Chano has been moved from wide receiver to running back for us to be our third down back, a receiving back kind of type. We still have John Emery on the team. We still have Ty Chandler on the team. And I think Chano can also be in the mix as far as those three guys being, you know, Ty Chandler will be, you know, pure backup. 
or starter in case John Emery ever gets hurt. Obviously, Emery's going to be our guy. Emery's coming off of a fantastic postseason game. Despite the fact that we lost our one and only postseason game, it was not because of John Emery, who had over 100 rushing yards and four touchdowns in that game. So... And looking forward to continuing developing Emery as we get the user pick here. And uh, the score of this game has been quite wild. I I believe we were down 28 to 0 or 24 to 0 or something at one point. We were also down like 35 to 14 or something like that. And now we're up by 21. So uh, it's been an interesting preseason game to say the least. So that is the recap. Now, you guys might be wondering why you guys are watching old gen gameplay because I told you guys at the end of the last video that we would be playing the next gen version for season 5. And we are. It's just that preseason in the Premier Madden League is still taking place on the um, the PS4 version. It's simply because, like, I guess the owner, like, the commissioner of the CFM, he didn't want anything buggy to happen when we transfer from PS4 to PS5. Especially since, as you guys know, the development traits of our draft class doesn't get revealed until the end of the preseason. So, at the very least, he wanted to do all of that and then transfer before we go to week one. So... I think that's part of the thinking. But what you guys are about to see is the same matchup you just saw. Preseason week one, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, except we are on next gen. So how is this happening? Well, now I don't really know how the whole transfer process from PS4 to PS5 goes, transferring um, CFMs, but apparently you can do it, like transfer the uh, league, then delete the league, and then retransfer if you want to. And that's what's essentially going on here, where the league has been transferred from PS4 to PS5 for people who wanted to like mess around in preseason. This game doesn't count for anything. Like, it doesn't count for XP, nothing. Like, if somebody gets injured in this game, nothing happens. So you guys are actually going to see the starters play a lot of this game, including a Manra Saint. Brown with the dime from DJ to the end zone for the touchdown. So this game, you guys will be able to get a feel of how the CFM will look on next gen. Because the next video I'm going to upload, whoo -hoo, what a move by St. Brown, is going to be week one against the Tennessee Titans in the regular season. And that's going to be on next gen. So we're going to get a feel of how our roster is you know, going to play on next gen. As uh, There's a little bit of lag right there from the game, don't worry. As DJ on the QB keeper, look at Big Cinco rumble in for six, DJ Uyongole can do it in all facets of the game as Ronald Jones will get us right back. How about this run? It looked like we were going to blow it up, but um, yeah, everybody got thrown down. I was the last line defense and simply did not play that as well as I could have. And that's going to be, you know, there's going to be some adjustments with next gen. And one of the biggest adjustments in next gen is the fact that, you know, when you play defense as a user you really have to commit to one gap you can't just like wiggle all around and um you know cover eight gaps and stuff like that you know you gotta like you know play discipline which is cool right i like that i like that part of the game i just you know it's you can't do what i just did with will harris and give up a big run with ronald jones right gotta gotta be a little bit more careful right instead of going for the big stop in the backfield you gotta maybe you know especially as a safety right like you gotta know you're the last line defense you maybe give up that first down and nothing more as we get the interception here with cam taylor Britt. cam taylor Britt. he almost gets the touchdown here on the return gets this to the five yard line dj throw it up golly had caught a fade earlier try to throw another one up maybe it was a half second too early right there and we're actually gonna get the touchdown with st brown that looked a little borderline right there on whether it crossed the plane but ref said it was good didn't even review it so cool with me so um yeah we're playing the same guy obviously uh shout out to the bucks user d lloyd um i've mentioned it plenty of times d lloyd's got his own youtube channel if you guys want to check it out he uploads all of his uh pml games as well as well as you know a couple of ncaa stuff and you know content like that you guys can check it out by going to his channel i'll leave that link in like the comment section below so we get the pick six here with eric stokes now my opponent d lloyd he said he hadn't really played much much next gen right like i played it like some not too much right not a crazy amount but i i definitely have my fair share of next gen games under my belt this deal i said he played like you know like nothing before this game like maybe like five games max i think i don't know but 
it was not too much and um, you can kind of see what's going on here as he's trying to learn the game and he finds himself down 21 points already and he's been pretty good so far in the CFM he's made the playoffs I believe three out of the four years made to the championship game twice you guys remember we played him in the championship game in year one when we were uh, we made our Super Bowl push as Justin Shorter how about this touchdown so while this while you guys can see what's going on the next gen version I might as well talk about some other roster stuff for us like let's talk about guys who are already on our team and could be seeing different roles right so number one is Justin Shorter so obviously we have the four wide receivers of Kenny Galladay, Amonra, Debo Samuel and Justin Shorter and there's just simply too many mounts to feed right there the goal is ultimately to try to trade one of those guys to be honest because we just have a plethora of wide receivers and we still have Tyquan Thornton at this point in the CFM Thornton is almost an 80 overall I believe if not he is an 80 overall so as far as a wide receiver four that's gonna see like you know maybe like 15 at most 20 snaps a game probably not even that much as Antoine Littleton all right I see you little big fella like why is this dude's last name Littleton when he's this huge I don't know this guy's built like an offensive lineman but he can he can groove he's got 86 speed or something like that he's not fast but like you know he's not gonna do that for us in the regular season I'm not imagining but I mean, in, wow, I don't know how we didn't get that ball. I don't know how we didn't tackle this guy. He got a first down. But, yeah, you know, actual regular season snaps, he might be able to at least bruise for us, right, at the very least. That's all we can really hope for. So, maybe like a goal line back or something like that. So, yeah, um, as far as that wide receiver core, I think we're still going to keep Justin Shorter at number four and, you know, at least give Debo a chance at the three. But, you know, if we're going to trade one of the two wide receivers, it would definitely, I'd prefer it to be Debo. But Justin Shorter probably has more value around the league, being like a huge, fast X Factor, as opposed to Debo, who is a star development, like 27 year old wide receiver. But, um,. You know, we'll just have to see what kind of packages we can get. But, you know, it'd be nice to move one of those guys before the trade deadline. And uh, that's our wide receiver core. Obviously, quarterback, we got DJ. We re-signed Matt Stafford to be our backup because why not? Nobody wants Stafford. We'll take him. We'll keep Stafford. Let Stafford be a lion for the most part for this entire CFM besides when he took a quick trip to uh, <laughs> um, Foxborough for, like, you know, a month or something like that. Not even. So, yeah, that's our quarterback situation. The running back situation I went over, we have – um, we saw Ty Johnson as our number four guy. Ty Johnson uh, might see kick return stuff once again and uh, maybe punt return stuff. As far as defense goes, we're going to try to play Jamie and Sherwood, who we drafted in season three at, you know, kind of a hybrid safety linebacker role. Try to get him more snaps. I tried to get him snaps in what was a season three. And um, we ended up just, uh, I think after the Bobby Wagner trade, he lost his snaps to like Moon and, um, of course, Bobby Wagner at that middle linebacker spot or sub linebacker spot spot I should say. Uh, Sherwood's been developing a little bit and I think we're going to give Sherwood another shot at that uh, sub linebacker position for season 5 as far as um, Jeremiah Moon, we're going to try to play him at outside linebacker when it comes to nickel and um, time sets and stuff like that. So I'm um, trying to move Jeremiah Moon around a little bit more like use him as a little bit more of a chess piece because he originally, if you guys may remember, was drafted as an outside linebacker, as Amon St. Brown is able to put on the Jets here late third quarter. You guys may have noticed we had the backups in, and then we paused the game at some point and brought back the starters, and both of us did. So that's what's going on here, in case you were confused. So, yeah, that's, you know, I think part of what I want to do with Jeremiah Moon is, you know, drop him into coverage at that outside linebacker spot more because we didn't really have a guy last season that we could truly drop from that outside linebacker position into coverage well. And I think that'll help us out a little bit, especially, like, you know, in 3-4 and stuff like that, and, you know, help potentially cover guys like Evan Ingram, who we had trouble with in the playoffs, or even Darren Waller, who gave us troubles in the regular season when we played the Las Vegas Raiders, so that's what's going on there, Sherwood's going to see some increased snaps, and then, uh, you know, obviously, Moon, we're going to move around a little bit more, Bobby Wagner, we'll still let him patrol the middle, do his thing, and uh, Anthony Barr, he'll be our outside Starting outside, left outside linebacker, but, you know, when it comes to nickel and dime sets, he might not really see many snaps beyond that. So, it'll just be, like, purely out on 3-4 stuff. So, that's what's going on there. I think our secondary is pretty much going to be the same, right? We got Michael Wright, Eric Stokes, Jeff Okuda. We have Christian Holmes as our number four cornerback. We did sign Micah Hyde as our second string 
strong safety and he might see a couple of snaps and you know, like maybe dime or something like that but otherwise obviously we still have will harris and tracy walker and then on the defensive line we still got um aiden hutchinson jordan birch jordan birch obviously coming off a spectacular rookie season and then we also have deshaun hands so that's what's going on there not much else changing otherwise and uh also you guys may have noticed that i don't know why i didn't mention this until now we have two new superstars on this team so dj after his highly impressive rookie season was able to get superstar dev he went from star to superstar so that's good for us he has the abilities of quick draw which will help us get the ball out quicker in case there's pressure and then he also has pocket dead eye which is the same ability matt stafford had for us in season two and that pocket dead eye is pretty solid so you know that's pretty good for us and then jordan birch he has secure tackler and um the second ability i don't know if it was unlocked at this point but i'm pretty sure we unlocked it by the end of the preseason the second ability is ripper which i don't think ripper is going to do us anything but secure tackler might not be bad and also actually the final point i should make is for jordan birch now that we have jeremiah moon playing more outside um outside linebacker snaps for us and then we'll have Aquara on the other edge spot that's going to move Jordan Birch inside and with that secure tackle Jordan Birch might actually be able to muck up the game defensively as far as run defense especially at that interior defense alignment position so we'll see how that goes for us obviously Birch did really well for us as an outside rusher last season with 10 sacks and you know if push comes to shove we might have to put him back out there if we need more pass rush but and we'll see how it all plays out as uh, you see um, I, at this I think I like during the second half I was really just playing around like first half I think we took care of the ball while second half I was like I really want to you know if we weren't weren't already trying stuff out I really wanted to try stuff out and you guys see the result of that um, we have 84 points with 320 left in the game looking for more with LaVishka Chanel and Chanel has been impressive in both PS4 and PS5 preseason action as Cole Komet gets the touchdown Cole Komet you know it's definitely the best we've had at tight end since we traded away TJ Hawkinson. And essentially, he kind of is like TJ Hawkinson for us. Like, the way TJ Hawkinson was in, like, Season 1 and Season 2 for us. Or, like, at least the beginning of Season 2, right? He might be that kind of guy, that kind of possession tight end for us. Not that we really need it the way we needed Hawkinson when we had a lack of weapons in Season 1 and Season 2 with the Lions. But... You know, Cole Command will be a solid guy for us to have. And, you know, like I said, a reliable tight end. Cause we just didn't really have that last season. As Amonra St. Brown making moves out here. Amonra has had a crazy good game, by the way. I think he's, like, well over 200 yards at this point. And, obviously, since we're in a meaningless preseason game that literally has no carryover effect in the CFM, you guys are seeing that we're not obeying any like rules at all like when it comes to you know chewing clock and showing respect to the opponent because both of us are still just messing around in this game so we're still airing it out with 28 seconds left with the starters and Amanra is going to hit the spin move going to the end zone and we are very close to triple digits in points this is the only way this will happen in a CFM without getting us in trouble and we're kind of close to it I'm not going to go for it because I have respect for my opponent, right? I like Deloid. I'm not going to do anything goofy like call timeouts, like be like just disrespectful, right? Even though we could if we really needed to to get the 100, but like, you know, I'm not going to disrespect them, right? Like, obviously, he's not really like, um, he's just still, you know, forcing passes right there that we could have picked off by all means, but yeah, basically just respect back there. I'm not going to like do what I might do to most other people, I suppose, in this situation. Uh, one second left. The dream for 100 is pretty much dead. We need to get that pick on that second down pass that was thrown in, like, essentially double coverage that uh, neither of our guys got a hand on. And we'll try to get a hand on this pass. Final play of the game. Trying to get that pick. Need a run back. Didn't get it. But that's going to do it for this video. So um, that's our Lions offseason recap. Uh, preview of next gen what's next to come because that's what's coming up in the next video our next video will be like i said season one or week one against the tennessee titans on next gen on ps5 with our slightly improved roster with still a couple of question marks to come still you know Maybe one move left to make for us. We'll have to see, right? We didn't make any trades in the offseason, but I'm not going to write off making trades in the regular season. Could be something that we try to explore. But until then, leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed this. Subscribe for more Man 21 gameplays and CFM action. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you, as always, for watching.